The Bothrops barnetti is Peru's rarest and most difficult to find snake. Its powerful venom is capable of killing a person in just a few hours. If to this we add an extremely aggressive nature, the result is a potentially lethal species. Because it lives in the remotest parts of the equatorial dry forest, this species does not represent a significant danger for the population. For this reason, the organizations charged with making the specific antidote stopped producing it more than 30 years ago. The few accidents which have occurred since then have had fatal consequences. Successfully locating and capturing this formidable species has become a personal challenge for numerous herpetologists from all over the world. In addition to the Bothrops barnetti, in Peru there are at least a dozen snakes whose venom is capable of endangering the life of a human being. Organizing an expedition to search for poisonous snakes requires a great deal of information and months of physical and mental preparation, as well as highly specialized people. Juan Dims and Raúl Doblado are a team. For years, they have traveled the entire world in search of snakes. A prestigious publication has hired them. Their difficult mission will be to photograph a Bothrops Barnetti in its natural habitat. Their passion for poisonous snakes leads them to skip the time they had set aside for acclimatizing themselves to the country and immediately travel to the jungle to make contact with the most dangerous snakes. For the moment, the Bothrops Barnetti will have to wait. A three-hour walk separates them from an Ashaninka village known as Sardis. As they must carry their own equipment, this has been reduced to a minimum, just the bare essentials. The village they are heading for is made up of a handful of rather rudimentary huts. It was established 20 years ago by people from the Andes who emigrated from the great scrubland in search of more fertile land. The arrival of Juan and Raul is a special event celebrated with typical costumes and traditional dances. These will inevitably fall into disuse if future generations of Ashaninkas continue along the current path of westernization. Even though they are aware of the danger involved in meeting a poisonous snake face to face, they have opted not to bring antidotes, as these need to be kept refrigerated in order to guarantee their effectiveness. In the event of a bite, they should be administered by a specialized doctor. Their use is only recommended in cases of severe poisoning. Without the antidotes, and several days from the nearest hospital, a bite would have extremely grave consequences. This Ashaninka native, who so kindly shares her lunch, tells them how she has lost two of her six children to snakes. There are few families that have not lost a loved one or seen a family member terribly mutilated. One name echoes insistently amongst the natives of this remote region, Jergona. This is the local name for the fearsome Bothrops Atrox, the cause of numerous accidents among the population. 
Y bueno, yo estaba macheteando este maíza. En uno de esos que yo estaba macheteando, me he metido la mano para recoger el maíz. Y entonces uno de esos sentí un incón. Se me, me di cuenta que, que la culebra estaba de nuevo enroscándose. Y era una jergona. Te pasa una electricidad prácticamente al cuerpo así. En ese momento me desesperé. Me, me vine al, al hospital de Chanaki y ahí también me han puesto antibióticos y no han podido controlar y a los 8, 9, 10 se empezaban a, este, a negrear los dedos prácticamente los tres dedos a negrear, a arrugarse como higos y me arde y viene el ardor así se, se nota que viene así por el cuerpo ah, viene y arde ya no, no puedo dormir los médicos decidieron este, operarme Due above all to the fact that it is so common, the Bothrops atrox is without a doubt the snake which causes the greatest number of deaths in the entire Amazon basin. Its venom, an effective cocktail of proteins and enzymes, causes cellular lesions which give way to an edema so large that it prevents blood from circulating to the tissue. This leads to gangrene and the resulting amputation of the affected extremity. It also causes a savage, extremely harsh, simultaneous and often fatal attack on practically all of the organism's systems. Esto es lo que me ha dejado la serpiente. En esta parte de la muñeca me ha, me ha mordido, aquí. Y entonces se habían negreado los tres dedos. Era factible este, amputarlo los tres dedos y me han hecho un injerto. Aquí también me han cosido, entonces ya son dos meses que estoy así. Dos meses de la picadura de serpiente. Ah, por acá, ha venido por acá, así ves. Acá estaba, acá con su rabo, por ahí. Estaba aquí. Ah, por ahí. De ahí, vení por así. A specimen of this snake has been seen in the area around Sardis, the Ashaninka village. Grande era, así. Un jargón. Ah, jargón. ¿De qué color? Ese es marrón. Ah, marrón y todo. As Raúl and Juan well know, the snake can't be far away. This species trusts completely in its camouflage to allow it to go unnoticed, and it may be lying in wait in the undergrowth. If the elusive snake should appear, they will have to react almost instantly, trying to immobilize it by grabbing it by the back of the head. To do so, all they have are their bare hands and an improvised wooden stick they found along the path. After just a few minutes, the action starts. Juan has found the snake. The slightest slip would have fatal consequences. Raúl's swift action is decisive. Deprived of his stick and in a terribly dangerous situation, Juan has hold of the snake by the tail. At any moment, the snake could turn and strike. Thanks to the perfect mutual understanding between Juan and Raúl, the first part of the capture has gone without mishap. They still have to get the snake into the bag. Although apparently simple, this operation must be carried out with extreme caution. First of all, they need to check that the bag has no holes. A ver si podéis atar algo para tapar el agujero. Amarre, lo que es poso. Ahí estaba, ahí estaba. Buen, buen trabajo. Bueno, de aquí a allí yo creo que aguanta. No, eso está bien, aquí va, aquí vamos a meterla. Yo suelto, ¿eh? No, no, no. Primera, ahí. The problem is solved, and this intense episode is brought to a successful conclusion. However, they're not able to enjoy this moment for long. Surprisingly, just 20 minutes from the village, a woman has seen a large snake enter the undergrowth through a hole. 
From the description, Juan and Raúl are sure this is an extremely interesting species. The Lachesis muta, or Sushupe, is the largest crotalid in the world. In such a tangle of vegetation, the search becomes complicated and the risk of being bitten increases considerably. The natives have already realized that in addition to the snake, there is another poisonous animal in the vicinity. An army of giant ants furiously emerges with a single goal. To defend their home with extremely painful bites. <sighs> Although Raúl is on his guard, he can't help but become the first victim. A bite from the Isula, the killer ant, causes an incredibly intense pain which quickly travels to the lumbar region and does not disappear for at least 48 hours. Perhaps it would be difficult to relieve the pain caused by four bites using any sort of medicine. Surrounded by hundreds of enraged Isulas, the best option is retreat, as the natives wisely recommend. <laughs> Capturing a snake in the heart of the jungle is not generally an easy task, although disappointments are short-lived. Raúl and Juan know that it will not be long before the next snake appears. Maybe even when least expected. Después de 10 días en, en el poblado de Sardi, Regresamos a Puerto Bermúdez para cruzar otra vez la cordillera y ir a la zona de Chiclayo, que es una zona desértica, para cambiar un poco de clima. Allí empezamos a buscar la serpiente Barnetti, que es muy interesante también para nosotros. Hemos pasado 10 días aquí en la selva, la verdad es que maravilloso. La gente de Sardis es eh, muy amable y súper educada. ¡Bueno, culebra! More than 30 meters away, a slight movement in the vegetation produces an immediate response. At this moment, with such a high dose of adrenaline, the danger always becomes of secondary importance. The essential thing is to capture the snake. Bidding farewell to the jungle by capturing a large specimen of boa constrictor undoubtedly bodes well for new captures at their next destination. We find ourselves in the outskirts of Lima, on this occasion, the goal is to find a certain species, the Bothrops pictus. This snake is a small crotalid. Nevertheless, the level of toxicity in its venom is considerable. Although the habitat seems suitable, Juan and Raúl appear a little skeptical. 20 or 30 years ago, the snake was found in great numbers in the region, but the demographic explosion of recent years has decimated the population. To the scarce chances of finding a Bothrops pictus so close to a large city, we must add the difficulty of its capture, as this type of habitat offers a great many hiding places. And so they must sharpen all their senses to their keenest and act with the utmost speed. Okay. 
Rodinguerio. Pero parece muy clarita, ¿eh? Podría ser Rodinguerio. Sí. Lo que pasa es que aquí en este hábitat no sé yo, ¿eh? ¿Cómo lo has visto? ¿Dónde estaba? Está enroscadita aquí, justo aquí. Sí, es una hembra. Chulísima. Fíjate. Buen tamaño, ¿eh? Adulta. Esta es una hembra adulta. Despite having confirmed the presence of the species at this location, Raúl is not prepared to leave without capturing another Bothrops pictus himself. He's aware that the chances of finding one decrease as night falls. A few meters away, Juan continues searching in the hope of finding another snake. But on this occasion, luck is not on his side. Uf, a ver, espérate porque la, la tengo mal cogida, espérate que use... Ostras, Venga. es una pictur, macho, Pero, a ver... Es que no, espérate porque la tengo mal cogida ahora, ahora, a ver... Cuidado, cuidado, más. A ver, a ver, cuidado, ¿la tienes bien? Sí, ya tengo bien cogida, ahora la tengo bien cogida, bueno, mal. tengo el dedo bastante cerca, Chula. eh. Pues ha sido tremendo porque estaba aquí, se estaba yendo, se ha metido por el agujero, tenía que cogerla con esta mano del cuerpo y meterle el gancho por aquí para pillarle la cabeza. ¿Sabes cómo te digo? ¿Y con qué las pisas con, qué las pisas la cabeza, con el gancho? Con la, parte de atrás de, ostras, con la parte de atrás del gancho. Sí, es una pitus pitus, ¿eh? Fíjate qué contraste tiene. Sí, esta no hay duda, ¿eh? Bueno, pues la metemos en la bolsa, ¿no? Venga, vamos. La voy a tirar, ¿eh? Suelta, suelta. Una, dos, dos tres. Bien, macho. Joder, Joder. Buena captura. Joder. Dos en un día, ¿eh? <ríe> Está mal. Bueno, nos vamos. After a 12-hour journey, heading north along the coast, they finally reach the only area in the world where it's possible to find the snake they began this expedition in search of. They have accepted an invitation to spend a few days at this private ranch close to Olmos in northern Peru. This is the exact center of the Bothrops Barnetti's area of distribution. <laughs> The biology and behavior of the Bothrops Barnetti are virtually unknown to science. This lovely species can measure up to a meter and a half in length and is capable of moving with extreme speed. This makes it a fearsome adversary. It is known to be active in the early morning hours and during the night, which is when it goes out to hunt. It is at this time that it may be surprised by the local residents. Encounters with this snake generally end up with the same result, a bite on a lower extremity with a fatal conclusion. They know that finding a Bothrops Barnetti in the middle of the day will be difficult, but trying to find one in this area during the night would be much like walking through a minefield. They will have to search very thoroughly amidst the undergrowth, trying to find the perfect camouflage for these elusive snakes. In addition, they will have to be careful of another species which is also found in this area, the venomous coral snake. This small elapid measures barely 50 centimeters, but it has an incredibly potent neurotoxic venom which affects the nervous system. Death results from respiratory paralysis. Its bright coloring does not make for very good camouflage. Rather the contrary, it's a clear warning sign. This young specimen follows the trail of its prey. The gecko is paralyzed by the venom in just a few seconds. 
Like all snakes, it will gobble up its prey whole thanks to an ability to dislocate its lower jaw. With the help of muscle movements, the snake moves the prey through its body until it reaches the stomach. It will take between four and five days to digest the meal, and the snake will not need to eat again for the next 10 or 12 days. It will now try to find a safe place with a suitable temperature where it will remain coiled until the food is digested. Parece que Raúl ha visto algo. Vamos a ver si es una barnet y ojalá. Creo que es una barnet. No me dejas, no me dejas. Para por detrás, por detrás, mira. Una barnet. A ver. This is a great moment. At last, Juan and Raúl have before them the snake they have been dreaming about for the past few months. Hidden in the undergrowth is a lovely specimen of the Bothrops Barnetti. It lies completely still, confident in its perfect camouflage. In order to capture a snake under these conditions, their mutual understanding cannot fail them. The consequences could be fatal. Trusting that the snake will remain immobile, they decide to begin carefully removing the undergrowth which hinders their access to the animal, keeping a safe distance at all times. At first sight, the maneuver which Juan is going to execute may appear simple. However, only people with a great deal of experience in handling venomous snakes are capable of carrying it out with such efficiency and sang freud. Like the other viperids, the Bothrops Barnetti has the ability to move its poison-carrying fangs independently. When holding the snake, finger position must be precise. Too far forward, and there's a risk of being reached by a fang in the retracted position. On the other hand, if even a little too far back, the snake could twist its head and get in a real bite. While Raúl attempts to determine the sex of the snake, a slight error on Juan's part almost becomes a very serious mishap. Fortunately, this incident has no negative consequences, but it clearly shows us that risk and danger always form part of the equipment which accompanies these two intrepid expeditionists. Once more, Raúl and Juan have achieved their goal. The photographs and field notes from the entire expedition will serve to create an up-to-date database which will undoubtedly contribute to a better understanding and protection of these fascinating and dangerous animals.